state action. The state action clause of the 14th Amendment declares that a state cannot make or enforce any law that abridges the privileges or immunities of any citizen. In the civil rights case, case 109 U.S. Code 3, 1883, the Supreme Court ruled that the Civil Rights Act of 1875, which prohibited racial discrimination in public uh, uh, accommodations, was unconstitutional because it tried to regulate private actors. The court decided in the United States versus Guest, case 383, U.S. 745, 1966, that the enforcement clause gave Congress the power to regulate the private of individuals who conspired with state officials to deprive people of their rights under Section 1 of the 14th Amendment. In later cases, the courts tried to distance themselves from the guest decision. And in the United States versus Morris, Case 529, U.S. Case 598 in 2000, the Supreme Court rejected guests and struck down part of the Violence Act, the Women Act that provided a civil remedy for victims of sex-related violence. I mean, come on. We just got to know law. We just got to know law. That's all. We have to know law. There's nothing wrong with knowing law. How are you talking about you know the art of war? You don't know nothing. The laws that govern this war. You don't know. If I can get you to think, you can save yourself. The court also handled a number of cases dealing with racial discrimination by private actors. In Shelley v. Kramer, 334 U.S. 1, 1948, the Supreme Court decided that the judicial enforcement of a private restrictive covenant that prohibited non-Caucasian occupants violate equal protection to a black buyer, even though enforcing private restrictive covenants was generally valid and enforceable. In Burton v. William Park Authority, case 365 U.S. 715, 1961, uh, 19, where I'm at, Morris, I'm sorry, uh, let me see. See, which one? Blah, 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 Park. Let me see. Burton versus William Authority. Let me Okay, yep. Burton versus William Park Authority. 365, 715, 1961. A restaurant which leased space in a public parking garage was found to engage in racially discriminatory practices. The Supreme Court, influenced by the fact that the uh, garage was used for public parking, ruled that the restaurant was closely tied to the state in such a way that the discrimination could be considered state action. As such, the Supreme Court decided that the restaurant's discrimination unconstitutionally violated the Equal Protection Clause. The Supreme Court, in Ridman v. Mulkey, 387 U.S. 369, 1967, struck down a California constitutional amendment that prohibited enacting any law that restricted any individual from re from refusing to sell land to a buyer for any reason. The court's argument seemed to be that the amendment to the state constitution was a state action violating equal protection. I mean, come on, Morris. You got to know law. You got to know law. When I say you're doing things illegal, we don't do things illegal. When I say we're not talking about you are a business. When I say putting your property and everything taken out of public, putting it in private. That ain't just a more thing. That's law. Europeans been doing that for the forever. Why you think they don't lose nothing for no damn back taxes? Huh? In a number of cases, the court has continued to limit state action claims against private individuals. In the case Jackson versus Metropolitan Edison, Colorado, 419 U.S. 345, 1974, the Supreme Court ruled that Section 1 of the 14th Amendment does not apply when electric utilities stop service to customers. The court also determined in Flag Brothers Incorporated versus Brooks, case 436 U.S., case 149, 1978, that there was no Section 1 uh, liability for a warehouseman selling store property to make good back payments, privileges, and immunities. Context, Morris. Context. Context. You got to understand how to operate when I say you're going to talk about something and they laughing at you. Not knowing the law is not an excuse in law. You must know law. You're going in there <laughs> unrepresented, not, especially not a buyer more that study indigenous people law and policy. You tripping. Because you're going in there thinking you know something. Privileges and immunities. Clause. Privileges, immunities, clause. There has been some debate over the meaning of privileges and immunities. Clause with several possibilities or with several possible meanings. So let's dig more into law. A question arises as to whether the clause meant that all state law should be applied equally 
to its citizens or that state laws should have certain uh, substantive content. Hmm, let's stay. The substantive view can be further divided into two categories. One view is that these privileges and immunities include all of the rights of the Constitution, including the Bill of Rights, Moors. Thus, this view seems to purpose of the Privileges and Immunities Clause as applying all of the rights in the Constitution to all of the states. Another view is that it only meant to make the Bill of Rights applicable to the states. Are you following me, Morris? Do you have your pen? Somebody talk to me, man. I'll talk to me. And Colford, and C-O-R-F-I-E-L-D versus Coley, and the 6th of February, case 546, number 3230, case CCED, PA 1823, an early case concerning the Privilege and Immunities Clause, found that the clause protects certain fundamental rights of all citizens. However, in Slaughterhouse case, 83 U.S. Code 36, 1873, the Supreme Court rejected the interpretation, the interpretation, the interpretation, holding that the privileges of national citizenship were substantive, but they came, excuse me, but they came about as a result of the federal government, the Constitution, or other laws, Moors. The fundamental natural rights were not included, and thus the equal function of the Privileges and Immunities Clause was taken over by the Equal Protection Clause, and the substantive functions were taken by the Due Process Clause, Moors. Aside from one case, that was later overruled. The Supreme Court did not use the Privilege and Immunities Clause as the basis for decisions until 1999 with Sanez, or Sanez, S-A-E-N-Z versus Roe, R-O-E, case 526, U.S. 489, 1999, when California set welfare benefits for new residents at a certain level equal to what their former state provided for the first year of residency in California, Moors. The court decided that part of the fundamental right to interstate travel was for new citizens of a state to be treated like other citizens of the state, Moors. Context, 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 due process clause, due process clause, context, 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 due process clause. The 5th and 14th Amendment both contain a due process clause, although the 14th Amendment applied explicitly. To the states, the Supreme Court has, uh, excuse me, interpreted the due process clause in both articles as having the same meaning as Justice Frankfurt described in his concurrence in Malinsky versus New York, 324 U.S. 401, 1945, to suppose that due process of law meant one thing in the Fifth Amendment and another in the Fourteenth is too frivolous to require elaborate rejection, Moore's. Are you following me? Due process is generally understood to contain two concepts, procedural due process and substantive due process, Moors. So let's talk about procedural due process. Procedural due process guarantees fairness to all individuals. This fairness might require different elements to the accused, including the opportunity to be heard, given notice, given notice and be given a judicial decision with a state rationale. When I say, how you going to know about things that you don't know precedent in cases? You get you some lawyer, he go in there and say, oh, you got to plead. You don't even know about precedent in cases. You should have legal counsel. That's what legal counsel is about. You should have somebody that can say, can give you legal counsel. You don't understand this. The fairness might require, okay, I gave you that, to give notice and be given a, excuse me, Morris, and be given a judicial decision with a state rationale as a basic rule. The more important the right, the stricter the procedural process must be. The Supreme Court has defined what property and, and liberty interests are in different cases, Moors. In the case Board of Regents versus Roth, case 408, U.S. 564, 1972, the Supreme Court held the 14th Amendment does not require opportunity for a hearing prior to the non-renewal of a non-tenured state teacher's contract unless he can show that the non-renewal deprived him of an interest in liberty or that he had a property interest in the continued employment despite the lack of tenure or a formal contract, Morris, or a formal contract, Morris, or a formal contract, Morris. When I try to show you how you a business, 
That's why I keep trying to tell you, you don't understand about things. And everybody, if everybody working, what you fill out at your job, Morris? Come on, that's why I be laughing at Morris when they be telling somebody to do something and ask them how they done it themselves. Nope. Every more that work, what you fill out, you putting your social security number on there. I know you more as are. You don't got to tell the truth on here, but you know I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth because you're not a business because you don't know. So we finna get in part two. It's going to end off. So log right back on because it's getting deep. We ain't even got into the one minute's my at. Log back on. Peace. Yep. So yeah, bro. So we yeah, we there. We at we at a procedural due process. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. Substantive due process. Exactly, Mo. So now, yeah. So I I highlight about the substantive due process. So when we get to substantive due process, Morris, that's a whole nother concept. Although procedural due process is widely accepted, substantive due process is a bit more controversial, Morris. Modern debate regarding the substantive due process clause tends to focus on certain liberties, which the Supreme Court has interrupted, or excuse me, interpreted as belonging to citizens with a large focus on economic liberties, such as the right to create a private contracts. Did you hear me? I know y'all heard me. I know you heard me. With a large focus on economic liberties, such as the right to create a private contract or contract with the S, plural. Do you hear me? How can you do a private contract? You don't even know. I just told you, you a business. You don't understand this. Listen to the context I'm telling you. I teach business. I have a business degree. I have an undergrad in, in business management with a minor in marketing and sales and non and, and, and nonprofit startup. I I go to these elementary schools, to the non-hit fund, especially I'm in Arizona, to these Mexican elementaries, and, and I got to say what it is. And I show them how to set up businesses in the right way. And when these kids graduate, they have their own business with, with credit, standing on their own entity having their own line of credit, and we don't understand business. We sitting up here arguing. When I say, brother, you don't understand business. You don't understand business. How you going to get a contract from somewhere you're not a business? Somebody getting a contract in your name? See, see so you got to understand the context about law. Law. The court has interpreted as belonging to citizens with a large focus on economic liberties. Economic liberties. Don't you know what economics is? Macro, microeconomics. We got to understand scholarship, such as the right to create a private contract. How do you create a private contract? I just told you you take your stuff out of public and put it in private. How? It's a legal process. One with your property. How? Live in trust. That's one. How? The other way with business. You have to create a business. You have to have your own. And you have your business have to have its own tax ID. Now you don't understand that when man, y'all business. There's no honor in being poor. A beggar nation can't save themselves. Nation, the root of nation is organized. Organized nation. Organized nation. <laughs> Economic rights started in the late 1800s. The Supreme Court used substantive due process to uphold a number of economic rights. In Lochner versus New York, case 198, U.S. 45, 1905, the Supreme Court held that the 14th Amendment protects a general right to make private contracts and that a state may not interfere with the liberty in the name of protecting the health of the worker. The Supreme Court continued with the liberty of Contract Doctrine in Atkins versus Children's Hospital, Case 261, U.S. Code 525, 1923, by upholding that a minimum wage law for nurses violated the Due Process Clause. Do you hear me, Morris? 
The court also used substantive due process to protect other fundamental rights, such as in Pierce v. Society of Sisters, case 268, U.S. 510, 1925, when the court held that parents have the right to refuse to send their children to public schools. Whoa! Do you hear me? Come on, you have to understand the law. So when somebody trying to judge you and they act like it's no precedent cases. You getting raped by an attorney, he going there like it ain't no precedent in cases. Well, your brother that understand law, they say you got to know. You got to have legal representation. You got to have legal counsel. The right way. <laughs> when the court held, the parents have the right to refuse their children to public schools after the New Deal and the Constitution Revolution of 1937 when the court started to defer more frequently to Congress on issues of economic legislation, the Supreme Court's interpreted of the Due Process Clause changed mores regarding Lochner's right to contract. Two cases went directly against that holding. In NEBA, or NEBI, N-E-B-B-I-A, versus New York, 291 U.S. 502, 1934, the Supreme Court held that the state legislator may uh, regulate prices of items notwithstanding a right to a private contract. And in West Coast Hotel Company v. Parrish, 300 U.S. 37, 1937, the Supreme Court upheld Washington State minimum wage law, effectively ending the Lochner era, ideas of the right to private contract, superseding a legislature economic regulatory abilities, Moors. Privacy right. Privacy right. The Supreme Court has also... Substantive due process to endow or to ensure other rights such as private rights, private rights in Griswold versus Connecticut, 381 U.S. 479, 1965, the Supreme Court endorsed a right to privacy, particularly relying on substantive due process. The court relied upon the right to privacy in several other cases involving individual liberties, such as pertaining abortions in War versus Wade, 14 U.S. 113, 1973, and pertaining to private homosexual acts in Lawrence versus Texas, 539 U.S. 558, 2003. The Supreme Court did establish a limit to doctrine in Washington versus Glucksburg in 521 U.S. 702, 1997, when it ruled that Assistant suicide was not a liberty upheld under substantive due process. I mean, we could go on and on. Equal protection. The Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment is one of the most litigated sections of the Constitution. As a brief overview of the clause refers to the fact that all citizens of the United States are guaranteed equal protection under the laws of the United States when a statute or ordinance discriminates against an individual or a class of individuals, and those individuals sue. The court will apply one or three levels of scrutiny to the law in question. Follow me. Rational basis. This is the lowest level of scrutiny imposed. Intermediate scrutiny. This is an intermediate level of scrutiny imposed, typically used for laws which discriminate on the basis of gender, disability, or illegitimacy. Strict scrutiny. This is the highest level of scrutiny imposed, typically more is used for laws which discriminate on the basis of race, national origin, alienage, or religion, as well as for laws which infringe on fundamental rights. Are we clear, Moors? If we clear, somebody talk to me, say I say. I can go on and on with a whole end up uh, a lecture on equal protection laws. Apportment. I didn't say appointment. I said apportment. Section 2 of the 14th Amendment deals with apportment of representatives from the southern states. The, excuse me, the abolition of slavery uh, 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 meant that the representation of the former slaves in the House of Representatives increased. The clause of the 14th Amendment was drafted to encourage southern states to grant blacks the right to vote without forcing them to do so. Congress did not really try to enforce the clause in Sanders versus Wilkins, 152F2D235, uh, uh, fourth sir, dot fourteen ninety five, a candidate for uh, Congress from Virginia, he they sued under Section Two of the Fourteenth Amendment, trying to force the state to adopt 
an at-large electoral system because the state was not eligible for the nine electoral seats it had been granted after the 1940 census. The court dismissed the cause as a political question. This section is still in operation and would operate in future cases of rebellion. You hear me, Morris? The Supreme Court of Affirm, excuse me, the Supreme Court Affirm in Richardson versus Ramirez, 418 U.S. 24, 1974, that under Section 2, states can prohibit convicted felons from voting after serving their prison sentence. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Richardson versus Ramirez, 418 U.S. 24, 1974, that under Section 2, states can prohibit victim convicted felons from voting after serving their prison sentence. Taking away their right to vote is referred to as disenfranchisement. And you can read more about that in civil rights, Morris. I can do a whole lecture on that. I can do a whole lecture on that. When I say, we got to understand rights. When a Negro, African American color, you have none. Disqualification for rebellion. Section 3 of 14th Amendment disqualifies an individual for serving as a state or federal official if the person has engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the United States, although the clause was written in context of the Civil War, ETC. I mean, I can go on about debt. Debt, the 14th, the fourth section of the 14th Amendment involved making the national debt sacrosanct in, in, in repudiating Confederate debt in Brand versus Haas in Virginia, 473, 1883. A federal court decided that contracts involving Confederate debt would not be enforced although contracts that involve Confederate currency are enforced to prevent injustice to those who was required to accept them during the Civil War, ETC. I can go on and on. So let's get into this history about the woman is my at, and we out of here. I hope you caught the lecture about <laughs> the ancient history of the feds and what this all about. So let's just touch on the woman. Let's touch on the woman, man. Because I don't know what we're going around acting like if we're not giving honors to the woman. we tripping. But the woman is a very distinct power in the universe, Moors. And as a matter of fact, Moors, the universe and the woman both have something in common that man does not. They both nurture the creation and life within themselves, Moors. They both give life and have everything in them to nurture the life that people produce without having to depend on anything outside of themselves. See, the woman moors, the woman more my body sisters, my empresses. The woman is a very distinct figure with a source of power that ignites the strength of men. Even though both were created for one another to complement one another, it is something that the woman carries mentally, my brothers, Mentally, my moors, mentally, my moresses, my empress, and my mobitises, morally and spiritually, that man can only attain through stages, whereas he has to keep falling. We have to keep falling, brothers, in order to see and accept most of the things that the woman already has known, has knowledge, has wisdom of when she enters in the essence of God's universe. Come on, man. We got to know this. We got to get into the essence. What I'm saying, my brothers, my moors, even my moors and my empresses, my mobitis, it's all about you. You are fallen humanity. You are fallen humanity, my sisters. Without you, we can't, we, we can't rise. We can't rise, Islam brethren. Islam, Islam. That's what I'm saying. We're getting so much arguing. When I tell brothers, I don't argue with nobody. Anybody want to argue, I delete them. Because they know if you are more, you know what this is all about. You know what this science is about. You know what this science is about. If you're a philosopher and a researcher, you know how the pen was changed. In the Quran, you know they change it from short, from brown and short to white and tall. You know how they made you think everything about you was a, a disgrace. Listen to the context in the Bukhara Hadith. It talks about you. In the in the in the in the European Bible, it talks about your skin like it's a curse. It's connotated. We have to 
get things right. We don't argue about nobody, no religion. They come with that religion, you let them have that and roll with it. But we know what more science is about. I self law and master, American Islam, American Islam. We know this. We know this. For a certain people, we know this science, man. We got to stop arguing with our own brothers, with the so-called brothers that Hebrew Israelite. You still a more? So what? You all dressed up. So what? You a more? It don't matter. You a more. It's only one nationality. You a more. Your religion is not your nationality. You are brothers arguing about Christian and Islam. They the same tenets. I mean, y'all brothers can argue all day with each other. You can argue all day, but that's not science. Because when you research, you got to understand when the Benz, when was the Byzant Byzantine Empire. What was the Byzantine Empire. Huh? And, 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 and when certain figures walked the earth, what was they under? But we see, we, we getting stuff so wrong because we call it our religious dogma. And I tell people, more is that we don't get under no religious dogma. I'm not no Muslim trying to convert nobody to no Islam. I'm a Moor. I study all the laws and the prophets. I respect all the laws and the prophet. Muhammad, Yahshua, Jesus, which is Yahshua, if you want to use the Hebrew alphabet, Confucius. Y'all know this, Moors. Stop the arguing. If anybody argue with you, that's not science. That's not more science. Delete them for life. That's negative energy. Moors know what I'm talking about. You got brothers trolling, want to argue with you. Shut that crap down. They know it because it's religious dogma because they don't read. Because they don't read. Organized religion, education, science, research, studying is frowned upon. In organized religion, God and man is not one. In more science, God and man, Allah and man, whatever you want to call it, is one. You all know this. In organized religion, God and man is not one. You know this. That's nothing to argue with nobody about. You know that. But what I'm saying, my mores and my empresses, what I'm saying is the woman comes into the woman comes into the world fully developed, fully to fully developed, mind wise, with the tools to build us as the more man in a way that we ourselves cannot do on our own. But in order for her, our empresses, our mobitis, our Hebrewesses. Our empresses, in order for them to do that, we must build. We must build. We have to provide her, our empresses, with something of a spiritual, a mental, and a moral respect that will get us to the stage of knowing, knowing our true purpose, knowing our true duty to her. Mores, what do, what do the prophets, what do all that they have in the hand? Fallen humanity. What do you think this fez is all about? Without the woman, what, what do you think this navel cord and this umbilical cord and this tassels and all this is all about? What do you think these four circles is all about? What do you think the white fez with the gold tassel is all about? The eastern star. That's all about the woman, the womb. And you Negroes with more fez on arguing. Telling somebody what color fez. You need to sit down. Telling some woman they can't wear a fez. Yes, you can, woman. You wear the fez. You listen to some religious dogma like this, a gang. A gang tell you what color to wear. Allah didn't tell you. Allah told you, told you what the colors mean. And if and, and if and when you do that, when you raise up to that level, that's who you are. Not man. But more as I can take you to the door of how to do it. But we have to be willing to go through it. Sometimes we have to be willing to destroy everything that we thought and say, okay, I'm going to build it up on solid foundation. Let me research. Let me ask a million questions. Let me research everything. For I can know for sure. How do you think you're going to respect and obey your forefathers and your foremothers and you don't even know what they study? You let somebody tell you that. That's sad. But having all these recognitions in a woman does not make us less of a man, Moors. It makes us more of a more man. That we can actually humble ourselves and bow and give grace 
That's the wolf pack. And give way to the divine feminine. It makes us divine masculine to give reverence to the woman. The woman is a word within herself, my brothers. So without the presence of her of her in, in your life, Moors, without the presence in her life, in your life, you will have no world. We will have no world. Without my woman, we will have no world. What will we live in? We it wouldn't be no existence. And we have to, like the prophet says, fall in humanity. We have to respect it in the terms of uplifting, protecting. Come on. That's what we're talking about. Fallen humanity. So in context, yes, it's dedicated to the woman. So brothers, if that, that's roll with me. Roll with me. And I promise you, after this, you will forever be grateful. You forever give gratitude. It will help you uplift your woman, your mother, your wife, your daughters. Which is our heaven. You know, you are forever being hell in your own mental hell if, if you don't, brothers. I'm telling you, you're only a good dude without your queen, without your woman. How can you be a king? There's, that's impossible. So I'm just here to give you just a brief something that's in me. Something from the God within. And then you don't have to listen to what I say. You don't have to listen to what I say, brothers and sisters, but I ask you to hear me out. So no more. We got to stop. We got to stop disrespecting our sisters and making a mockery of things. We got to understand the woman. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that, Morris. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Oh, you say what? Hold on, I'm sorry. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You say what? Okay. Nothing wrong with that, Morris. So, as we proceed, understanding the woman. The woman is like wisdom. Woo! She has a radiation of knowledge from head to toe. If you can understand the wisdom in our universe, my brothers, you have to understand that the woman is the wisdom of the earth. Moors, I'm talking to my brothers. You can look at her and see the beauty of her wisdom physically. All you want. But you will never be able to understand that wisdom until you understand her importance. When I tell brothers, you have to try to, you have to figure out how to get inside in a woman without getting inside in her physically. In her pants, what I'm saying. You should want to know everything about her. You should want to feed her physically, mentally, and spiritually. A man can have all the knowledge in the world, Moors. But if we don't understand the knowledge that we have, then we will be lost in the world that we get it from. Are we clear? And this is like, just, just listen to this. This is like, woman, if you don't understand her, then you would be lost. No knowledge. How? How can you understand her when you're present in her? That should mean something. How do you understand the balance? These three things in woman, which is the sun, which is her heart. The moon, which is her mind. And the stars, which is her feelings. We all have to get in that understanding. I am too. That's why I said I'm a master navigator. I continue to learn and continue to build and continue to build myself for my queen. The woman has very distinctive moral values apart from other beings in this world that radiates beautifully internally, which brings about external, external, external sunshine of respect. And she is more adapt to bring this about whenever her heart is in a state of balance and peace. I know you, you got to understand this, Moors. I see brothers talk about they more than they wise, not Moors, and they wise, not into it. What, you in some secret masonry? What, what, what is this? You act like you some secret group? What, you wear your, you wear your fez, your turban, your bonnet, and, and, and clandestine? Talk to me. 
Oh, oh no, and then you arguing over some religion? And you know more science is the essence of more science is way deeper than that. You know you have Maurice Coles and Muhammad, and you know all this. You should know the science, but you arguing. That shows me a lack of knowledge. That shows me a person under religious dogma. That shows me that you're not a more in the heart. That shows me. That shows anybody else because you're not operating on love, truth, peace, freedom, justice. You're trying to rewrite the book. You can't rewrite the book. <laughs> the woman is a universe and she has a heart which is like the sun because whatever she touches from that part of herself if she is balanced and protected follow me she will bring about a civilization planets that will revolve around her with a circle come on man you, you got your fares on you should know what I'm talking about that's around, around her with a circle of respect that you plant in her to create that civilization. Most importantly, us as Moors, as men, we must pay attention to her, to her mind. What's the mind? The moon. So you rocking all the signs and symbols. You got the star and the moon on your hand. Do you know the essence of that? No, you don't. The mind, which is the moon which is in her moon. Why the moon, you may ask, Brother Bay? Because the moon is what moves the waters, and the waters represent life and knowledge. Her mind is what creates the, men, the mind state and the life that is within her. So whatever knowledge she obtains goes into the fetus as it grows. Her mind is like the moon that moves the knowledge into the life which is inside her essence. The woman's whole body is made up of 90% stars, which is the feelings of the universe, Moors, my empresses, my Mobitis, my Morrises. One wrong move in understanding these stars in her universe, follow me, follow the context, Moors, will cause the planets, which is the civilization, to collide against one another. This is what happens today, Moors. The woman is abused, not only by outsiders, but by our own Moors. So therefore, our own children, which, which are our planets, are growing up colliding with one against each other. Why? Because they don't know who they are from the birth, from the womb. Why? Because we're not telling them. Why? Because we're not telling them to obey their forefathers and their foremothers. They have a divine creed and nationality. That's the problem. It's not just them. This is systematic. From the womb. Are we clear? If my moors would just listen to just a tittle of what I'm saying, we must take our orbit into the universe, which is the woman, which is our moral women, which is our morises, which is our mobitis, which is our empresses, and feed the proper wisdom to the planets and the stars which is the civilization, which is our children, which is our offspring, to bring about a better generation of us to prepare the Moors, the men and women, for the rule of the hereafter, that Allah, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, Yahweh, God, whatever you want to call it, has promised us that he will take the last and make them first, which is us, follow the context, and make or excuse me, and take the rejected stone that the builder rejected. Follow me and make them the head stone of the corner. This is the future, but Allah will not move us further until the most important tool of our civilization, the builder, is protected and respected, which is the woman. What is the garden that produced food, you ask, Brother Bay? The seed that produces the food, when planting a seed to produce food, one must find a good ground of soil to plant that seed, which will bring forth the product. When you are growing good vegetables, my brothers and sisters, you need water and light to help the soil give motion to the seed that is being planted in the soil. Follow me. The woman is very similar in this way. Of producing the seed that she carries, Moors. The seed 
of life that is in her needs water, which is wisdom, needs light, which is knowledge. But the most important, my brothers and my sisters, it needs good soil, which is understanding. Are we clear? When carrying a product in the womb, the woman is carrying life, which is the seed inside the womb, inside of her essence. Whatever is done on the outside affects that inside of the womb. As us, as more men, we must do all that we can to make sure that our producer is protected from the negative thoughts and actions of this world. Satan, which is the spirit within, which can be in me and you. That's the duality. That's how the pendulum swings. But Satan, which is inside of all men and women, is setting traps daily to keep us away from our women so that our seed will grow up without the garden, without respect of the garden that produced it. Are we, are we clear? If you look around today, just look what's happening. How are we respecting our forefathers and our foremothers? How? How? How are we? Knowledge that the man must instill in the woman to shed light on the seed inside of her. She is the garden. And us, brothers, us as more men, we are the gardener. Are we clear? Are we clear? We are the gardeners. We are the gardeners. We should understand that. Don't beat your women. The women, the women is like beating yourself. If the woman is down, civilization will have no meaning to humanity, my brothers. Stop calling her outside her name as well. It's things that we have to cease. As my brothers that like to read the Bible so much, which is great, we study all the laws, go into your own kind. That's what the scripture says. That ain't, that's what the scripture says. The woman is the producer of civilization. If you take the woman out the world, who will be around to produce the fruit that is needed to bring about the existence of humanity? Yes, my brothers. Yes, you can say that man is needed to plant the seed. But we must remember, keep it in your hempel compass, that the woman has very distinct DNA that can carry on forever that a male does not have. She is like the sun. The man is like the planets, Moors. The sun can. The sun can stand by itself. But if the sun goes down or if the sun goes out, then the planets will collide. Are you following me? That's just simple. Science got to send this. Science get us out. Law got to send this. Law gets you out. You must know who you are. Divine, creed, and nationality. How are you respecting and obeying your forefathers and your foremothers? That's why you don't know Islam. Islam is yours, and you don't even recognize it. Because somebody else trying to tell you who you are. I'm telling you. They don't want to show you the books that was changed. I will. I give you from their, from their pen, from the, from the so-called Arab pen, how the stuff was changed. I will give it to you. Flat out. Because most people don't have elders. Most people don't study. They don't even study first century nothing. When you get in the first century, it tell you. All the Europeans, all the so-called Arabs, they're paying tactic is all. They'll tell you. Brothers caught in, in, in modern history, which is European history. That's why I be laughing. Because most brothers, they caught in, in modern history, which is European history. You know nothing about ancient history. Nothing. Nothing. Because you're connotating European pens. Flat out. Everything in creation is brought forth by the woman. Everything. Everything in creation is brought by the woman. Everything. The woman is the creator of science and all of the architects of the world. Look at the name woman. Take away womb. Take away womb. Take away womb. And what do you have? The word becomes man. That is because she is the, that, that's because she is the completed human being. The man is just a degenerated from the woman who created him in her image 
and after her own likeness. The woman has a strong DNA that dates back to her goddess times of Egypt where her connection to her sister, the goddess Mayat, still is alive within the uh, Asiatic woman today. But who is Mayat? Mayat literally means truth in Egyptian. In ancient Egypt, Mayat was not just a goddess, but was a concept as well. The goddess Mayat was that which kept balance and order in the entire universe, not just the people of Egypt, which is Kemet, but everything in the heavens and the earth bowed down to the rules of Mayat. She was what controlled the seasons. So do you hear me, my sisters? On the Easter star, when you're when you under the European auspices, when you see the daughters of the American Revolution, when you pray to the East, it's all of you. All you. Mayat, Esther, all that, that's you. Isis, that's all you. They won't tell you, I'm telling you. That white fence, that gold tassel, that birth canal, all you. All you. All your womb. Period. Period. She was not controlled. Uh, uh, she was what controlled the seasons. She controlled the water flowing in the oceans. And she controlled the circle of life. The circle of life. The circle of life among the animals. She controlled uh, 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 life and death. And all that was. When I be telling you, you get, we get so connotated with, with other people peeing when they when I tell people sin, sin, sin is in, in the moon god in their in, in the Mediterranean literature. Oh, well, this is sin. They give you everything about you is bad. You going around part of you is bad. Ain't no part of me is bad. I'm made in the image of my creator. You got to be a fool. And my parents, are you a fool? But a part of you have to die. That's false doctrine. That's the dumbest thing ever. But you say you're more. Okay. And she kept. It in all balance, the story of Mayat starts at the beginning of creation because of the goddess Mayat being both a goddess of truth and justice. Ah, of what? Truth and justice. Well, what are we more? Love, truth, peace, freedom, justice. Wow. Oh, okay. Yep. And a concept of balance. Wow. Balance. What's above is below. Oh, okay. Yep. You have, must have a balance. What's our balance? We respect and obey all the laws and the prophets. Jesus, which is Yahshua in the Hebrew dialect. Confucius, Buddha, Muhammad. Come on. In order, she was the main icon of judges in courts. Wow. In Egypt, the judge would wear a feather on their heads. And most of them were also priests of Mayat. The courts were often temples of Mayat. Because of this, when the Greek culture took over power, they used the word logos. Oh, for Mayat. Logos was what they used to judge a person's life. In the Bible, Logos was used instead of word, which was also another name for Jesus. But in the Hebrew dialect, because there never was a J in the Hebrew dialect, it was Yahshua. That's why I don't argue with brothers. You say you're a Hebrew Israelite and you're walking around with the King James Version and you don't understand the history of the Bible of interpretations and versions. And you're going around saying in God and Jesus and in the preface of the Holy Name Bible, it tells you the G-A-W-D, God in English, is whole different. And when you get the older books, you get the Geneva Bibles, all that. It talks about the more. They replace it with Ethiopian. They keep connotating it down. But you want to argue. You want to argue and say you the chosen one. And don't understand that we are a people. It's sad. It's sad. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Logos. And the Logos was with God. You understand that. You read it. The representation of the goddess Mayat was that of a teenage winged uh, 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 girl. Sometimes... Also depicted as two winged girls. She always wears the ostrich plum on her head and holds the scales in her hand when weighing the hearts of the dead. She is the wife to uh, Ether, Anubis, or Thot. As has no children of her own, she is a goddess of the, uh, of the, of the autumn equinox. When day and night are on equal length. When the seasons are in the warning. Her name literally means truth. Her name literally means truth. And she is the goddess of the truth, justice, balance, and order. She is the goddess for Libras. She is the goddess Themis in Greece and the goddess Timat in Babylonia. She is neither good nor evil because nature needs both to exist. She is neutral. Notice how today there are more storms and earthquakes going on in the world. I'll tell you about that, but we don't understand history. I'll tell you, I can tell you about harp, I can tell you about all stuff. 
I don't come with no pseudo academia to you. I'll give you everything you can research. This is because the energy of the woman is unbalanced due to her disrespect, Moors. The woman is my act. So one of my brothers was like, would I give a little bit of, uh, of civics? I'll give a little bit of civics and then I'm gone. I can't give too much because brother be going out in the world operating, trying to argue with people and you get yourself killed. Like your, your, like your United States bankruptcy and your birth certificate. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go to extensive. I'm just going to touch pieces of it. Study. The real truth of the matter is, as you and I know, that a financial element in the large centers has owned the government of the U.S. since the days of Andrew Jackson. Franklin D. Roosevelt, U.S. president, in a letter written November 21st, 1933 to Conal E. Mandel, House, heaven to me, heaven to me, when my weakness is at the highest strength and my weakness is at its highest victory. God is at my highest interest because I am in the image and likeness of him. He is heaven to me. So let's talk. The United States is a private corporation. I want you to study. You don't read a piece and, and, and I'll be seeing more that highlight two senses and they be posting it on Instagram and I, you'll get yourself destroyed in court. You will get yourself chewed up and spit out. No, matter of fact, you'll get yourself locked up. I'll be laughing. You don't even understand law. Do you know that the United States is not a country? I hope we know that. It is a private corporation that was set up as a surety holding insurance company to collect taxes from its citizens. Ah, there we go again from citizens to pay off the national debt of 1933 in which bankruptcy, which was filed by President Roosevelt in 1933 and through the birth certificate citizens became the surety of collateral for the U.S. debt. Come on. I touched a little bit. I can't go all over. I give you a little clause. I give you a little clause. It is established fact that in the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9, 1933, 48, Stat 1, Public Law 89-719, declared by President Roosevelt, being bankrupt and insolvent. HJR 192, 73rd Congress, M. Session, June 5, 1933, joint resolution to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause, dissolve the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capabilities or or capacity, excuse me, of all United States governmental offices, offices and departments, and is further evident that the United States federal government exists today in the name only. They receive the receivers of the United States bankruptcy are the international bankers via the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. Now, that's why I tell brothers, you don't under your taxes that you paying out your check. Because more talk about I'm this and I'm that. You got a birth certificate. You paying taxes out your check. Stop lying. If you are a business, listen to context. I'm talking business. I give business advice. I don't care what color you are. If you are a business and you set yourself up as the right type of business, because it's 501c3 all the way to 10, those funds can be going to the charitable contribution of your choice. Because your money that you give, that you think going to the government, since it's the private banking system, and they divide it. Law. Research it. The context. That's why I said you, you're not organized. You're arguing. You're not organized. The receivers of the United States bankruptcy are the international bankers via the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. Off. All United States offices, officials, and departments are now operating within a de facto status in name only under emergency war powers with the constitutional uh, Republican form of government now dissolved. The receivers of the bankruptcy have adopted a new form of government for the United States. The new form of government is known as a democracy. I'm not going to give it up. I'm going to stop because we got to research and study. You say you're more, you say you're a grand sheik, you say you're all this. Well, study. And you should be agreeing. If you study, if you know law. If not, of course you should be arguing. Of course you should be arguing because you don't know law and you mad. Truth has no sides. The 
The act was instituted and established by transferring and or placing the office of the Secretary of Treasury to that of the Governor of the International Monetary Fund. Public Law 94, 564. This is all public law. Page 8, Section HR 13955 reads in part, The U.S. Secretary of Treasury received no compensation for representing the United States. Did you hear that? Let me say that again. The U.S. Secretary of Treasury received no compensation for representing the United States. Wow. Gold and silver were such a powerful money during the founding of the United States of America that the founding fathers, fathers declared that only gold or silver coins can be money in America. I'm telling you. Currency is not money, but a money substitute. Redeemable currency must promise to pay a dollar equivalent in gold or silver money. Federal Reserve notes make no such promises and are not money. A Federal Reserve note is a debt obligation of the federal United States government, not money. This is public information. The federal uh, uh, United States government and the U.S. Congress were not and have never been authorized by the Constitution for the United States of America to issue currency of any kind, but only lawful money. Gold and silver coin. You don't got to listen to me. You don't got to listen to me. Research it. Now, let me connect this to taxes. In Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, it clearly states that only Congress, it clearly states, and I repeat. Oh, let me wipe my face. Hold on. I'm sorry. Because you got to hear this. You got to hear this. You're trying to, okay, good, we back. So, in connection to taxes, in Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, it clearly states that only Congress has the power to lay and collect taxes for the sole purpose of paying off the United States national debt. This alone kills two birds with one stone, Moors. No one, the Constitution, admits that your taxes helps to pay off their national debt. Number two, if only Congress is given power to collect taxes, which is the IRS collecting your taxes, and the IRS is not even a part of the government. I mean, do your research. It is a private corporation incorporated in Delaware on July 12th, 1933, as a for-profit by three Nazis by the name of Clifton Barton, Ellen Barton, and Lawrence Echevarri. Lawrence, E-C-H-E-V-A-R-R-I-A. Research the pen. It is a coincidence that all of this is happening in 1933. The United States files for bankruptcy. The Internal Revenue Service is set up. And then here goes the birth certificate, which, which contracts the citizens, forcing them to pay taxes. All citizens, black, white, orange, purple, green, to pay taxes at a later date due to your parents signing you over to the state by way of the birth certificate. So now when I'm talking about the law that Obama passed, so now let's get into the right of uh, 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 indigenous people, the right of a nationality, the right of the child. Research that. You can go on the United Nations page and, and, and research that. So that's what that is. But if you are more, you do it the right way through the more Science Temple. Kill two birds in one stone. Are we clear? All the taxes that you pay does not go to the United States Treasury because it does not exist. The Treasury Department of the IRS is the treasury of the popes of the Rome under the Treaty of uh, uh, Rome, and not one penny goes to schools, Social Security, etc. Your taxes are divided amongst Queen of England and the popes of Rome. Research this. That's why I say you got to know law. You got to know international law. You got to know what I'll be saying about context. Income taxes are for federal employees to pay. A federal citizen is one who works for the United States of America. The United States of America is a corporation, and if one is a citizen of it, they are a corporate a corporate person citizen and must pay taxes, not the natural person. You hear me? Not the natural person of which all federal employees, public servants work for the purpose of upholding and preserving the unalienable rights of the natural person, of the natural person. Y'all know I'm telling the truth? 
Y'all know I'm telling the proof, truth. We just afraid to tell the truth. Because we operate as Negro color African Americans. And we operate fear. We scary. We scary. Exactly. 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 Not the natural person of which all federal employees, I gave you that. They are trustees with a derived authority. Constitution. The articles within the Constitution describe their duties and obligations as trustees. 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 The Constitution is the law of the land. And if natural people do not want to be molested, they must enforce the Constitution and be sure it is not violated against them, which you must understand the law. You don't have to agree with what Obama was saying, but that's why I tell people the law works. He was dropping Jews. You have the right of a nationality and the right to change it. The right of indigenous people, the right of the child, the right of the aboriginal. You missed it. This is already established law, and there is no other law in the land. There exists color of law, which is negative law, as opposed to positive law. Considering that senior official at the Internal Revenue Service is fully aware of the fact that there is no law currently in existence making a U.S. citizen liable for or required to pay either the income tax or the Social Security employee tax, only a truly generous citizen would. Con Consent upon discovering that upon discovering this, continue to voluntarily donate these taxes to the government by allowing them to be withheld. Man, y'all not understanding the law. I can't even give, I'm not gonna give you everything about your birth certificate. From the time that we are born in the United States, we are issued a birth certificate which which identifies us as state property, which gives jurisdiction to America over us as a person. On our birth certificate, there are red numbers, and those numbers are set up in the United States Treasury as our stock number, which then sets to the New York Stock Exchange. Research it to have your record as a stock. This certificate is then sold to the international bankers as collateral for the debt of the United States. Research it. Each one of us, each one of us, including our children, are considered assets on the bankrupt United States, which acts as the debtor in possession. When a child is born, the hospital generally sends the original, not a copy of his record of live birth to the State Bureau of Vital Statistics, right? Sometimes called the what? The Department of Health and Rehabilitative Services. Each state is required to supply the corporate United States with birth, death, and health status statistics, right? The state agency that received the original record of the live birth keeps it and then issues another birth certificate in a different form where the name of the baby is spelled in all capital letters. Come on, man. I know y'all know this. Oh, no, but you don't know law. You arguing. You going to court, doing this, getting in trouble, getting yourself and your children locked up, getting audited. And I be laughing. And I'm going to laugh at you, too. The birth certificate is registered in an international commerce. The word registered, as it is used in commercial law, does not mean that the all capital version of the name was merely noted or recorded in a book for future reference purposes. With a birth certificate, Moore's is registered with the U.S. Department of Commerce. The Treasury will issue a bond on the value of the birth certificate or the birth certification. The bond is then made available for purchase on a securities exchange and is bought by Federal Reserve Bank. This purchase then became the authority of collateral to issue Federal Reserve notes, which we use as a medium of exchange. The value of the bond in today's world is 630000 That's what you see these moors trying to file and class stuff and getting themselves in trouble. That's what they're doing, but you don't even know law. You don't know how to operate. You're operating so wrong. The bond is then held in trust for the Federal Reserve at the Depository Trust Corporation at 55 Water Street in New York City, about two blocks down the street from the Federal Reserve. I can go on and on, but I'm not going to go on with that. You must study. And I leave. I have to drop some nuggets. 
because I'm studying the law and I want you to understand this. You must understand law. You must understand how to defend yourself in court. You must understand that there is not, not a such thing as judicial courts anymore because of bankruptcy that was filed by President Roosevelt. You must know all law. Therefore, only administrative courts acting as judicial courts. Supreme Court ruled that there are no judicial courts in America and there has not been since 1789. Research. Study. Judges do not enforce statutes and codes. Execution. Administrators enforce statutes and codes. F5 versus GE 281, US 464. Keller versus PE 261, US 421. One status, 138-178. The Supreme Court is the only court that can rule and have constitutional and original authority over a free man or a sovereign person. What you, excuse me, what, what does that mean? Well, anytime that you call yourself a citizen of the United States. You give a jurisdiction and authority over the court to prosecute you because you are using the birth certificates to be under the powers. A sovereign is someone who has nationality as a more or, or, sover or sovereignty with another nation. With another nation. So what I'm saying is, Morris, when you say you're African-American, when sovereignty, you have dual citizenship. I've been hearing more stuff about, oh, I'm, I'm not going to be a U.S. citizen no more. Listen to that dumb niggerly stuff and you don't have another nation that's claiming you your ass are you you are alien you will be in the fema camp i guarantee you people just be read a little bit of stuff and, and get you locked up false doctrine you already home a sovereign is someone who has a nationality as a more or sovereignty with another nation who has credibility in international law and also has delegation of authority to carry out law. Are we clear? So in certain things, when, when people say, have you been pulled over? Like I said, it's certain laws in certain states. You must understand the DUI law and certain things. Understand in your state, in your state. You must make people identify themselves. You must make a person ask for their oath. But you must do it in a loving way. You ain't starting no issue. If you got license, why you don't want to show the police your license? You want to just have confrontation. That's Negro stuff. You can do things in the right way. Because being a more, that, that don't mean they ain't going to bust your head or not. Somebody that's evil, they don't care if you know damn more. They'll bust your head anyway. You do things in the right way. You file affidavits. You do things the right way. You should know the law. The thing can be done the right way. You don't have confrontation right then. You got to, he got to have delegation of authority from Congress because delegation of authority is where authority derives. If he want to give you the ticket, take the ticket. You can file an affidavit, a fact demanding their oath of office and delegation of authority. And on the same affidavit to the court where you are summoned, you can challenge jurisdiction of the court because the Supreme Court ruled that once jurisdiction is challenged, the court cannot proceed. When it clearly appears that the court lacks jurisdiction, the court has no authority to reach merits, but rather should dismiss the action. Mello versus the U.S. 505 F2D 1026 Research Jurisdiction In every case, Moore's the plaintiff and there is a defendant. You just got to understand law. You don't go in there arguing, trying to be crazy. Understand law. You have the right to defend yourself if you have your nationality. Nationality, that's national. You're getting it twisted. Usually when you are taking the court on behalf of a ticket, Moors, or other cases, you are the defendant. For an example, the state of New York versus Jane Doe, and I'm just using it as an example. The question you must bring before the court, for the record, who is the state of New York and can the state of New York appear in person? Because under the Sixth Amendment, you have the right to face your accuser. That's just law. Of course, the state of New York does not exist, but the judge will likely say to the prosecutor is representing the state of the New York. You then turn to the prosecutor and say, for the record, can you state your name? And after he states his name, yeah, the judge will get mad. That's why you got to have proper representation. That's why you got to know law. They ain't there to help you. The county clerk ain't there to help you. But you ask for the record. Can you state your name? And after he states 
his or her name, then you ask the prosecutor to present identification or a birth certificate with his or her name as the state of New York. They will not be able to do that. Then you say to the prosecutor, I have committed any crimes against you. Of course, the prosecutor going to say no. You then turn to the judge and say, for the record, I would like to demand that the case be dismissed. You have the right to ask certain things. And if not, I will be filing a lawsuit against you in court for fraudulent charges in federal court. You have the right to defend yourself. You're going off scared and timid because you don't know law. You're going in as a Negro, color, black. You have no rights. Dred Scott, come on. You must remember that for a crime to be committed, there must be an injured party and that has nothing to do with getting no ticket. I love you all. Peace.